Uh, hey guys, this is Paul Savet in Bangkok. We're going to look at uh, the Quick and Dirty Guide D-Book Formatting Part 3. Now, uh, when we left off, we had put the uh, entire manuscript, uh, we had ripped it off a, uh, a word processor, put it into a, a basic text editor, and got p-tags wrapped around everything. And then we imported it into an HTML document that had a style sheet uh, pre-built into it. So what we're going to do is we're going to do a little uh, tweak and peek and uh, make sure our uh, HTML file looks the way we like it. So, all right. Uh, let's see how it looks. Pull up my web browser here. We'll go here. All right. So, okay. So we got, you know, a uh, big title here. I got some front matter here. Oh, you know, uh, like this. You know, I don't want this, like, way over here. So uh, we go back to our editor, see what we did wrong. All right. Okay, see, I forgot to put uh, class equals front. If you recall, uh, the front style up top was uh, basically my uh, same size text as the rest of the story, but it had a text align center and it had a margin on the bottom. Okay, so we save that up here. Go back to our browser, hit F5 for refresh. All right, what else we got going on? Oh, see, I accidentally left an indent here. You know what I did? I left. I left um, it in the base base P style. Now the base P style, what I defined it as up here was first line indent, first line indent. I want just like no indent. So uh, I ha made a style called notes that I kind of used for front matter and back back jacket type material. So we'll just hear class equals front. All right, pretty easy, right? And you just kind of keep going and doing that and making sure everything's good to go. All right, so uh, I made a dedication here. It's dedicated to question mark, question mark, question mark, my new baby. Now, I didn't name my new baby that. What happened was um, I had put it in my uh, word processor document in Thai. Uh, her name is uh, Gochagon. That's Gochagon, and it doesn't want to convert it into the text editor. But don't worry, I'm not totally boned yet. What I can do is I can copy this. I can go to this real nifty program online called Unicode to HTML Converter. Basically what you do, you just cut and paste that in there. Go to Gone, Convert, and it'll give you the uh, special characters for the tie. So we'll take that out of there, come back here, and uh, we'll paste that in here there on these question marks. Alright. Okay, there we go. Save that, we'll see how it looks. Much better. All right, and that's my daughter's name. Okay, and um, you can't really see it on uh, on a web browser, but there's actually a page break here. There's one here. There's one here, and there's one on each chapter. Now, how did I do that? It all comes back to the uh, it all comes back to the style sheet. And what you do is, anytime you want a page break, you go page break before always. So you can put that in, you know, author notes, style sheet, the the headline style sheet, the chapter style sheet, whatever you want. Or maybe you don't want page breaks at all. It's up to you. And it's up to you what your readers are looking for. Okay. Now we come to the chapter headings. And uh, what we see is, see this chapter one? I made it um, to have like a, a bottom uh, margin here. But then uh, I have like a name of the chapter just directly below it. But I don't want the the name. I want it to be the same font, but I want it to be right below chapter one. So how do I do that? All right. So I come back to my uh, my editor here, and it's like, uh, see, I've done it on two different separate p tags. Two p tags. You can see that class equals chapter chapter one. And then so what it's doing is. It, it, um, the, the chapter style has the bottom margin on it, so it's spacing out between the chapter one and the Joshua tree, but I don't want that. So what I can do is, instead of keeping it, I want to keep it all in the paragraph tag, but I add what's in, it's called a, a break. And it's just one term. There's no opening and closing. It's, it's a standalone term. It's br space slash and then closing tag. And what that'll do, that'll just um, do like a, a single uh, return. 
so you come back here and take a look at that it see doesn't that look nicer now I've done that for all the chapters and I'm looking through so before we go messing around and calibrate to convert to uh, MOBI and EPUB files, I want to take a quick look at uh, some of our span tags. Um, see, we look here. I'm going down uh, down here, and you'll see down here it says, you know, DN, right? What? Let's say I want um, I want that in blue. You know, I don't advise messing with colors on your e-reader, but uh, say you want it in blue. So I made a style sheet up here, just span blue in color, and this is a hexadecimal cover for blue. Now we just go down here, and what I can do is put a, stan uh, a tag in here, span class equals blue, and then close it off here. Make sure uh, for your tags that they're properly nested see the span in the span here it's like closest to the end and then the P are outside you gotta be careful about that with uh, XHTML alright so we'll save that let's have a look oh there we go see it turned blue so that's kind of interesting and I'm gonna just go through real quick make sure everything's uh, good to go uh, you'll notice here I forgot to, to put in a, a chapter mark. That's all right. We can fix that up real quick. Just go up here. Class equals chapter. All right. Let's see how that looks. Whoops. All right. Let's try that. All right. There we go. So we got all our chapters in. I'm just double checking, you know, like uh, here for instance, I forgot to make these italicized. So we'll go back uh, inside our editor and just get those uh, fixed up real quick. Alright, so there we go. I'm going to go span class equals I. And remember, that's my own special style for italics. I don't like using just the standard I because I'm afraid it's going to get screwed up on the XHTML. I just don't know. All right. Okay, we'll double check that. See how we're doing. All right, everything's looking pretty good here. Pretty good. And I've got my HTML file. So what I'm going to want to do now is pull up Calibre. Calibre. And then I'm going to go, uh, this is a great program. The guy who designed this is awesome. And it's all free, which is excellent. So I'm going to add books. I'm going to go make sure I'm in the right folder. I'm going to open my uh, HTML file. All right, there we go. And I'm just going to click on it here. And, uh, whoops, I'm going to click Edit Metadata. We're not going to click on it. All right, so uh, we got America Goes On in the title here. Uh, you can see it over there. All right, Paul Salvette. The author sort, that's just how your name looks when it gets sorted out. Title sort, America Goes On. Okay, we want to make sure we got our nice cover up there. So uh, I'm going to add a, 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 it's a 533 by 800, but usually you can do 600, 800. It's all right. My uh, designer is still uh, getting this fixed up. Uh, tags, that's where you put, you know, thrillers, Iraq, you know, whatever you want here. Okay, date it's published, publisher, I'm my own publisher, so put my name in here, and then you can put a blurb over here, like something you'd see on the black jacket, like, America Goes On is a great story, blah, blah, blah. I still have to write the blurb. All right, so then we're going to click OK. Then we're going to come back here, and we're going to want to get converted now. We're going to want to convert it to EPUB and MOBI files, so we just click here. 
All right, and this this one f shows up. Now, one thing we want to do, we want to make sure we do is um, we want to look at the table of contents. Calibre has this great system of determining the table of contents, but it gets a little screwy. It uses this thing called XPath. I don't know. This stuff is like total nerd stuff. I don't know. So we're going to click for force use of auto-generated table of contents. And I've got this string here. Now, you're going to have to trust me a bit on this. What this is, is it's going to look for any style with a class of either a chapter or a headline. And it's going to take that and it's going to make it into um, the table of contents automatically. So uh, you just have to take my word on that. And uh, we're going to click OK. Oh, we forgot to check. Uh, we want to make it an EPUB. So we got an EPUB there. OK. All right, and it's uh, doing its job. It takes about 10 seconds. Boom, it's already done. So let's pull up and uh, see how it looks here. All right. America goes on. Here's my EPUB I just made. All right, we'll pull this up in uh, Adobe Digital Edition. Now, one thing Adobe Digital Editions does, it kind of stretches out the title, the, the, the cover to fill the whole screen. I don't know why it does that, so we'll just put that over there. It looks good. And you'll see over here, this is the table of contents. So we got all the chapters, we got the author notes, um, the dedication, etc. Now uh, we look through here, let's see how it looks. Yeah, that's looking pretty good. If you don't like it, you can always go back and change it up. Uh, one thing that's important to check for is like the, the, the page breaks were properly uh, put in because you can't really check that in HTML. And it looks like they were. That looks pretty good. I think if someone bought this, they'd be uh, pretty satisfied with the uh, final product. Now we go down here. Oh, it even put in the blue on the end. That that was real nice of them. And you can click around, just make sure everything works okay and all that good stuff. Now, one thing I noticed for some reason, uh, the Thai characters did not convert properly. I don't know what's going on with that. I'll have to consult some of my nerd friends to see like how that gets fixed because I just don't know. All right, so EPUBs are good for, um, uh, I think the Barnes & Noble uses them, uh, Asia Books in Thailand uses them. Uh, they're kind of becoming the standard, but Amazon, the big daddy, the big daddy, Amazon, they're still using uh, MOBI files, so we want to make sure we convert that as well. But it's really easy to do. You just click Convert here. You know, you pull up your format. You know, we want MOBIs there. All right, and then you click... OK. All right, it's processing the job. And I use, uh, I use this program called uh, MO, uh, MOBI Creator. I think it's called, I, I can't even remember the name of it. But I, I'm just going to pull it up and see how it looks. Oh, excuse me, it's the Moby Pocket Reader, whatever that is. All right, so I'll bring that in here. You can see it. All right. Uh. All right, so that looks pretty good. The cover looks a little nicer there. It doesn't get all stretched out for some reason. So all right, um, it's scrolling through okay. You know, if I drop it down a bit here, whoops, if I drop it down a bit here, you can probably see it a little better. And we want to make sure the text is free flowing okay. You know, the italics got put in, that's good. You know, you want to watch out for things like, you know, if it's one long, hyperlink or something like that. I've seen like every problem on, on so many different books, you know, it's really pissing me off. But this is like pretty good, you know, I mean, you know, you could sell something like this. And uh, you could just, and from here you can just upload this to Amazon and that's it, you're done. You're done. So, uh, you know, don't accept, you know, I can do it. I'm not a smart guy. I, you know, I read Guido Hankel's website in a few days and like I figured out how to do this I'm not a genius or anything so you know do not accept you know anything less than perfection on formatting and uh, please let me know if you have any questions and I'll do some uh, maybe some further videos we can talk about you know uh, imaging uh, putting in images because uh, that's a whole another ball of wax and some other things but uh, thanks for joining me guys and check me out at paulsalvet.com